Mumineen, we are starting Surah Hajj. And before we go to the details, I want to to to, to recite one hadith from Prophet Sallallahu Whosoever recites Surah Hajj, Allah will reward him both the reward of pilgrimage and lesser pilgrimage of all those who have done them in the past and all those who will do them in the future. Such a big reward of reading Surah Hajj. All those Hajj and Umrah from the beginning to the end of the done on the planet would be on your account. Alhamdulillah. But with the ma'rafa, with understanding, you know, and to do to, to amal on that, that's important, you know. Surah Hajj was revealed in Medina. And, and the first verse I recited is, O mankind, be in fear of Allah, fear of your Lord. Verily, the earthquake of our is the grievous thing. And this verse was recited to Prophet when he was in journey with companions. And the Prophet, when he recited this verse, he said, Do you know what the day would be like? So a companion asked, Only Allah's Prophet knows. So then Prophet explained that that day Allah will call Adam, say, Oh Adam, bring the fuel of fire. So Adam will say, What is the fuel of fire? He says, From your progeny, out of thousand, will 999 will go to hell and one will go to paradise. So Prophet, the companions, when they heard that, they started crying. The Prophet said that that's why the Prophets were sent to the human being to guide them to the right path and fear Allah and follow the Allah's command. Allah says that I hope that if from all the people of paradise, one third will be filled with my nation. So all companions got happy, very excited. They said, Allah Akbar. And Prophet said that out of all people of paradise, uh, half of the people will be of, from my nation. So Asab got more excited. Alhamdulillah. So we should be hopeful with Allah's mercy and we should do taqwa, you know. Uh, and that's why uh, uh, we have to be serious about Quran and and al bayt and follow their commands so that we don't become part of 999. <laughs> Kullu murda'atin amma arda'at wa tada'u kullu da'atin hamlin hamlaha wa tara nasa sukara wa ma hum bi sukara wa lakinna azab Allah is shadeed. Then Allah described how the day would look like because it would be earthquake, right? Then Allah described that earthquake, how it, the severity would be of earthquake. On the day you shall behold it, every suckling mother shall forsake her suckling babe. She will stop suckling the babe because of the severity of the tremors of the earth. And every pregnant woman shall lay down her burden. They will abort the babies itself. The fear. And you shall see people intoxicated. Yet they, will, they are not intoxicated but the chastisement of Allah is severe. The fear would be so much that they look so confused like if they are drunk. But it's not they are drunk but they are so scared because this is the this is the 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 time when there will be long earthquake, and after earthquake will be first trumpet will be blown, then everybody will die. We know that. Then second trumpet will be blown, and then everybody will be again raised from their graves. كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ تَوَلَّاهُ فَأَنَّهُ يُدِلُّهُ وَيَهَدِهِ إِلَىٰ عَزَابَ السَّعِيرِ Now Allah talks about the people who are, how the people are, those 999 people. And among people there are such as dispute about Allah without knowledge and follow every rebellious Satan. Yeah, there are a lot of people you see everywhere, in, in, including mass, that they don't have knowledge, you know. They don't read Quran, they don't read Hadith, but they, have, they are opinionated, they have, they have firm beliefs. And these beliefs they have made in their own head, you know, somehow getting learning from somebody else like them. Not going through the proper sources, not going through the Quran, not going through the Hadith, not going to al Bayt. Then they become, they think they are the most guided ones, but they are not. And when they tell them to read Quran, they will not read Quran. Because they are possessed by shaitan, you know. And those kind of people who are this kind of false belief, they will only listen to any shaitan because they are 
they are so much misguided that, that they are in their own. Allah leads them to their own. Then Satan grip, takes the grip of them and they follow every kind of Satan. It says every but to be a kullo shaitan in marid. Kullo, all kind of. One shaitan will come take them to right. Second will come take them to right. And they'll never be guided. Why? Because they don't have ilm. It's very important to ilm, you know. And ilm comes from Quran. A nation has left Quran and Hal Bayt. Only Quran is not enough. If you, if you just do Quran and if you don't have Hal Bayt, then you become like terrorist. Because you read Quran without understanding it. So you need both. Now what is Allah said about those kind of people? about whom Satan it is decreed that whosoever takes him for friend then verily he will mislead him and will guard him into the torment of burning fire the Shaitan has been written about Shaitan that who becomes his friend he just misguides him and takes him to the fire this Shaitan comes in the form of human and also as a jinn whispering in your heart. As far as the Surah Nas is so important to keep reciting all the time. Because, because and you will be careful of whom you are learning the knowledge, from whom you are seeking the knowledge. You get knowledge from the true alim, from the true one who, who is giving you from the correct sources, otherwise you get misguided. Now Allah talks in the next verse about how Allah will raise the dead from the grave. And Allah is giving logic about it and explaining in detail. Ya ayu nasu in kuntum fi rebi minal bath. Fa inna halaknakum min turabin, thumma min nutfatin, thumma min alakatin, thumma min mutakatin, mukhalakatin, vagere mukhalakatin, li nubayin lakum. Well, in one ukaru fil arhami manashau ila ajalim musamma, thumma nukrijukum tiflan, thumma li tabta li li tablugu. Ashaddukum. Ya ayunas su in kuntum fi rebi min al-bath. Fa inna khalaqnakum min turabin, thumma min nutfatin, thumma min alakatin, thumma min mudqatin, thumma thumma min mudqatin, mukhalaqatin, wa ghair mukhalaqatin. Li Nubayyilakum wa nukirru fil arhami ma nashau ila ajalim muthamma Thumma nukhrijukum tiflan thumma li tablugu ashuddakum Wa minkum mai yatafafa minkum wa mai yuraddu ila arad al-umuri li kayla ya'lamu min ba'di ilmin shay'a Wa tara al-arda hamidatan fa idha anzalna alahi ma ahatazzat wa rabat ambat min kulla zawjin bahij it's a long verse. Inshallah, we will in parts. Oh, people, if you are in doubt about resurrection, Allah says. If you doubt, raising from the grave, right? Resurrection. Then Allah is giving logic. Then, verily, we created you from dust. You are nothing but dust. Then, from a sperm, zygote, right? Then, from a clot. Then, from a lump of flesh. Partly formed and partly unformed. That we may manifest to you. And I'll stop here, Inshallah. Then we'll go further. Allah is talking about that you are doubting the resurrection. We created from dust, then from the zygote, then from the clot, then from lump of flesh. These are the really, that's how the embryo looks if you see through microscope, you know. We could see it today, but Allah is describing what we see through microscope in the Quran 1400 years ago. That's how it looks. And exactly it looks like that if you look through the microscope. Partly formed and partly unformed. Means some embryo develop and some they get miscarriage. Uh, there are narrations that the, 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 the souls who were in the particles and they come through the loins of the forefathers and they, they, make, they make zygote. Those zygotes survive and they become the full form human being and and those I got, we don't have those particles from the uh, from the Alam Azhar, you know, particle time, you know. 
when we were there in Alam Azhar, you know, when we were particles and we did some witnesses. So only zygote will conceive and become human who, who are from, uh, from the particle worlds. Others will be aborted. And we cause what we will to remain in the wombs for an appointed time, right, and then we'll keep them in the womb for appointed time. Now there are some hadith. Prophet says, the creation of each of you in the womb of his mother is completed in 40 days of being uh, nutfa, 40 days of being alaq, and 40 days of being muqda. Then an angel is sent to blow the spirit in it, and it's, it, it is decreed that four things should be written, his sustenance, his death, his act, whether he will be wretched or, or the good one. That's so. Uh, so after after these stages, angels comes. But after all these stages, which we just read, angel comes, blow the spirit, and put all these things and decrease for him. Imam Raza says. So when the four months are complete, Allah will send two creator angels who. To it, who will form it and write its sustenance, its death, it, whether it will be wretched, wretched one or the good ones. And I, I continue the translation. And we cause what we will to remain in the wombs for appointed time, then we bring you out as babes, then that you may attain your maturity, and some of you are called to die, and some of you are kept back to the worst part of life so that they may know nothing after having known. Means you grow, some die young, some die, are returned to the worst part of life. What is the worst part of life? The old age. Mom says that the worst part of life is when you are 100 years. So that they, they know nothing because you lose your knowledge and memory and everything. You don't even remember what you ate last night. That's the worst part of life, you know. And there's no hope to get better, you know, like, like you become like a child, you know. But child, have a, have a young parent who help, but this old man, who going to help this old man? That's why Allah says so much that when your parents grow old, don't even say, oof, because they go through this pain and suffering of losing everything. The worst part of life. And, and there is no hope to get better. And still people expect though from old people to do some better, which they cannot. They don't expect much to children, but old people they expect. And they are really like children. So Allah has described how the world works here. And you see the earth dried, dead, but when we send down the water on it, it stirs and swells and brings forth every kind of attractive her- herbage in pairs. Allah is saying how the resurrection will happen, first he talked about how from a dust human being is created, then Allah talks about how the human being is, some die young, some die old, and, and Allah talks about how the de- land is dead, and Allah brings the rain and makes, and brings all kind of beautiful plants, you know. A word comes zaujin bahij means herbage in pairs. Pairs means Allah is talking about pollination, male female plant. We didn't know much before this century, right? When microscope came and we found pollination, but Allah is describing, Allah is giving a hint of uh, pairs plants at that time. That's why Mamali said that, that with, with, with passing of time, the tafsir of Quran will change. <coughs> After saying Allah, all these great signs, Allah is saying, Dali kabi anna Allah al haqqu wa anna hu yuhil mota wa anna ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah is saying, after explaining this, if we really understand it and to the comprehension what Allah does with us, our life, He creates us, He feeds us through ground, all, all, kind, of, all kind of food from the ground. Allah is doing all that, right? Then Allah says, This is because Allah is haq. And because verily He gives life to dead. We were dust, we became human. And because really he is all powerful over everything. 
Allah is saying your is all powerful over everything. But we see in the system that from the dust we become walking human being. We see the dead earth and we see after some time you see all these beautiful plants giving all kind of fruits and crops. Who does that? Allah does that. So when he does that and not only he does that but this, this great phenomenon is connected to the whole universe and he's, he's making the whole universe like this working together in a team and it's all because of his omnipotence. And the universe came from nothing. And now you see such a great beautiful universe. So when he can bring from nothing to this great, that means Allah can do whatever he wants. Omnipotent, right? That means that Allah is giving a hint towards the day of judgment and the resurrection. Allah talked about resurrection, right? So that we, he's saying, I'm omnipotent. I can resurrect you and can show you next life. This life is not just for play and games that you are you, you come and play and die for no reason and there is no nothing afterward. Allah says, I'm omnipotent, I'll bring you back just like this and I'll show you the judgment day and there is then there's heaven and hell. And verily the hour is coming, there is no doubt therein, and that verily Allah shall raise up whoever is within the graves. The one who has sense should see already, who are 40 plus in our life, should all start seeing our grave and judgment day. You know, our, day, our life is over if you are 40 plus. We should start seeing our days of burial and day of our resurrection already, and we should Ponder every day for a timing that we are in our, already in our grave. Pondering every day for a few moments that I am in my grave will change our deeds. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَلَا خُدَمْ وَلَا كِتَابٍ مُنِيرٍ سَانِ اِتْفِهِ لِيُدِلُّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزْيُنْ now these these are last three verses for today these verses are about the leaders who are the deviated leaders and the deviate other people because of their arrogance and what are their qualities Allah says and what are their end result Start from verse number 8. And among the people there is such a one who disputes about Allah without knowledge, without guidance, and without any enlightening book. He has no knowledge, he has no guidance, and without any enlightening book. Turning away in the pride to lead astray from the path of Allah. He is arrogant. It's to lead in the astray from the path of Allah. For him there is a disgrace in this world and he we shall make him to be in the uh, day of judgment, the punishment of burning fire because of what he does because of his arrogance. And what is the end result? That he goes to fire. And, and like, give you explanation. This is for uh, that which your two hands have sent before and that Allah is not unjust to his servants. You did yourself to this. Allah is not unjust to the servants because he did not have knowledge, he did not have guidance, and he did not have an enlightening book, so he had just false pride and arrogance. If you don't have these three things, you fill this, you fill this vacuum with a false pride, and you become an arrogant man. A alim is humble, but jahil, ero, uh, who ignorant, is very arrogant. Because of his low self-esteem, inferiority complex. So now, what is knowledge? What is guidance and what is illuminating book? Knowledge is, is the reasoning and understanding any matter. It's called knowledge. And if you have reasoning and understanding, you can learn. And what is guidance? Guidance comes from Allah. And the guide who Allah nominated. You learn from the guide. You develop reasoning. You learn from the guide. Quran is a guide. al al is are the guides. If you have both, then you are guided with the grace of Allah. And when you are guided with the grace of Allah, you will have an enlightening book in your, in your heart. The book will start shining in your heart, the Quran and Hakeem. That's why Prophet left the book and the teachers. 
the Hadi, the guides, El El Bayt, the one who will follow them will be the, the guarded one. This is Hadith of Thakrayan. Everybody knows this Hadith. Out of 73 states, one state will go to the right path because of these three characteristics. That's why you see a lot of people who have a lot of Quran, but still they are like they are like terrorists. They are killers. They will kill anybody. Because they don't have an enlightening book in the heart. They don't have the true guides, El El Bayt. And then they, they just do rebellion in the world. And they become disgraced to Islam. Yazid was one of that kind. He knew that he doesn't have knowledge. He knew that he is not guided. He knew that he did not have an enlightening book. He was a drunkard. He should drink. A one who, who drinks has no, no soul. He has no soul. We know that. He had no soul. He had, he was just, he had just false pride. Shaitan was in his heart, right? And then he became the power to the degree that Imam Hussein was afraid that the, the, the Ummah is going to follow him as a leader. And the Ummah will go to hellfire. If Imam Hussein did bad, the deen will be finished. When we started our uh, Malis today, we read the first hadith that Prophet said, uh, among thousand, nine hundred ninety-nine will go to hell, one will go to paradise. Imam Hussein said, I, I am going to Karbala for the Islam of my nation. Islam is to reconcile, reconciliation of the nation so that they don't become part of 999, but they become part of the one, you know. And he declared, as he declared out of his arrogance when El El Bayt went to the court of Yazid, he said that uh, there was no wahi, there was no revelation. It was all the plot of when he asked him to control the power. He showed his, his inside hollow arrogance, you know. That's why Imam Hussain came. He, he was more worried about only Ummah. He didn't care that he sacrificed his children. He, he didn't care because he was seeing the burning fire. You know, uh, he, we read the verse. Azab, Azab al Hariq, he was seeing that for Ummah, you know, Judgment Day, that if they follow this kind of leader, there's only burning fire for my Ummah. Imam Hussain said, I'll give my children for the sake of my Ummah, for my, my grandfather's nation. We need to follow Imam Hussain alayhi salam in a true sense, to follow him, to really sacrifice ourselves for the sake of Islam, to spread the the goodness of Islam to the whole world to show our good morals and characteristics like Imam Hussain did in Imam Hussain how he was so good to Hur that Hur became Hur today we see Hur because of his good behavior Inshallah Imam Mahdi is coming soon we should be part of his nation who support Imam, Imam, Imam Mahdi salam, who are with him shoulder to shoulder in his struggle to spread Islam all over the world Allah 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 Allah